This is the Friendship Sunday School class, July 17, 2022. This is Lesson 11 of the Book of Revelation. Father, we ask that you be with us and help us to understand this sometimes difficult uh, passage of Scripture. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We will begin with Revelation chapter 4. And there's a transition here. After we have studied the seven, the letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor, we are now going to shift to a location in heaven. And he begins, After these things I looked, and behold a door standing open in heaven, not being opened, or not open or shut, but standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me, said, Come up here, and I'll show you what must take place after these things. Now, many people, preachers and commentators particularly, say that this is the signal for the rapture of the church. Uh, is this the case? The main rapture passages include 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15 and the secondary one with John chapter 14 and the only one that mentions being caught up or snatched away is in the Thessalonians 4 passages. It says, Then we who are alive and remain, from 1 Thessalonians 4, will be caught up. The Greek is harpazo, and the Latin from the, from the, uh, from the Latin version is rapimur, or raptus. And from this, the English translators of the Bible have derived the term rapture. And many people would say they don't see the word rapture in their English Bible, and that's uh, correct. It comes from uh, it comes from the the uh, the Latin. Together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall always be with the Lord, therefore comfort one another with these words. This is a passage typical of that that talks about the rapture of the church. And others say the come up here of Revelation 11, 12, that's the, after the death of the two witnesses and they are, they are resuscitated and they rise up out of the seats of Jerusalem and the voice says, come up here. Now, if that were to be the case, that would be the end of the seven-year period, and that would make it a rapture at post-tribulation, as it is often called. So my conclusion is there's not any scriptural basis for come up here in Revelation 4.1 to be the signal for the rapture. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was standing in heaven, 
and one sitting on the throne. So we're about to see a throne series. Now, here's a depiction of the throne in the midst. Um, someone sitting on it, and below it there are seven lampstands. Around it there are four living beings or living creatures. Unfortunately, the King James translated them beasts. The wording is wrong for that. And then outside that are elders, uh, 24 elders. And beyond that, not pictured on this, this, uh, uh, this view, is a myriad of angels, lots and lots of angels. And he who was sitting on the throne was like a jasper stone, clear like diamond, and a sardius, a reddish stone. And there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in, an emerald in appearance. Now, we, is not a multicolored thing, but it looks green as, as shown on that. Uh, picture. So, around the throne, and thus we'll see elders, some living beings, um, lamps, and angels, and um, what we haven't mentioned yet is there will be a lamb it was not depicted on that scene. There are three throne scenes in the Bible. First is in Isaiah chapter 6, when Isaiah was commissioned as a formal prophet. There's Ezekiel, which we uh, will use a little bit later. Ezekiel chapters 1 and 10. And then Daniel chapter 7 in which there is a throne scene having to do with the question of whether uh, God is an abomination and uh, arguments that um, brought undoubtedly by Satan that God, you just can't call your son sin and make it be true. That's not Fair. We'll come to that in the, in the appropriate time. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and upon the thrones I saw 24 elders, presbyterals, old people, sitting clothed in white garments and golden crowns, Stephanos, the crown of victory on their heads. So, I'm going to take up these things in sequence, in some sequence. Probably the most controversial is the question of the elders. And so, I'm going to take that up first. And later we will take the other items in, in the throne scene in some kind of order. Who are the elders? The first guest is saints who were, were resurrected after Jesus' crucifixion. And this uh, is a very limited uh, statement. Matthew 27, 50 to 52, just two or, three less, two or three verses in all of Scripture about this. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He is on the... He is on the... 
on the uh, cross at this time. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep, that is, who had died, were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, it's, it's a neat, fanciful interpretation, but there's very little to commend it in the way of scriptural evidence. It's interesting, but no evidence. So it's speculation and not acceptable to me. Second guess. The 24 elders were saints who represent the raptured church. Well, what's that based on? It's based on the crowns. They're wearing crowns, golden crowns, and white garments. So the conclusion to that is that they must have appeared before the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, which is not to judge for salvation, but to judge whether rewards will be received in heaven. So the argument is that since they had crowns and were wearing white, they must have already appeared before the judge made a seat of Christ and therefore are the church. However, there's another, uh, this, this, this is, have to do with the, the bema, or the judgment seat. We must all appear before the judgment seat, the bema of Christ, so that each one may be recompensed or rewarded for his deeds in the body according to what he's done, whether good or bad. And that is people who have already been saved. They are believers. And the issue here is what did they do after they were saved and when did that happen? Well, that's the flaw in this argument. Uh, but another thing about the judgment seat, I won't read all of this, but the part in red says, if any man's work which he has built will remain, that is, the, th the deeds that he has done after his salvation. He will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, since they both will be tested by fire, he will suffer loss. That is, loss of, of a reward. But he himself, will be saved, yet so is through fire. He's already been saved. That's a settled issue. That is not the subject of the judgment seat of Christ. Now, let's look a little further ahead in Revelation chapter 11. This is actually the uh, uh, end of a sequence, and we'll talk about that later. And the nations were enraged, and your wrath came, and the time came for the dead to be judged. And the time to reward your bondservants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, the small and the great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. But you see, there is a reward at issue, and it's the time to make this reward 
at the judgment seat of Christ, but later than we are looking at. And the elders are not mentioned after Revelation 19 when the church becomes prominent. Are they humans or spirit beings? Well, let me make it clear that not all angels are spirit beings and not all spirit beings are angels. Now, that may be a pretty cryptic. There are two words in the Old Testament in the Hebrew, malak, plural malakim, and they means messenger. And in the New Testament, Greek is angelos, or angeloi, plural. And both of these mean exactly the same, a messenger, one who carries messages. There is nothing in the language here that suggests whether these are spirit beings, what we would call angels, or is it simply a human messenger? For example, John the Baptist sent two of his disciples, human beings, but called angeloi. Two angels, angeloi, were sent to ask Jesus, was he the one they were looking for, or did they need to seek someone else? Jesus didn't answer them yes or no. He just said, he recited the list of, of, uh, of uh, things that he had accomplished which were prophesied to be accomplished in the way of miracles by the Messiah, the one who is to come. Very well. So, there is some who argue that elders and they're called angels. Well, we're not sure in the scripture, so these must be human beings. They're dressed in white, wear golden victory crowns, the Air Force are good. This must be raptured Christians, that is, the church. Why are there another 24? Well, the answer is I, I truly don't know for sure, but Guess number three is that these 24 uh, beings represent the 12 apostles and 12 Israeli tribal representatives, and that would indicate they're all uh, saved mankind. If this is correct, why doesn't John, who is writing this book and reporting on what he hears and sees, not recognize himself and the other apostles? Why doesn't he look at them? Oh, there I am sitting on the throne, and there's Peter and all the rest of the apostles. It doesn't make any sense. But guess number four. They're spirit beings. Now, we believe that people, uh, individuals, are tripartite. And they have a body and a soul and a spirit. Now, <clears throat> there are a group that are 
spirit beings. That is, they don't have bodies, that usually, usually not uh, observable bodies, and they have souls, and they have spirits. We call them spirit beings. So these are spirit beings that serve in some respects as priests. Remember, uh, David laid out 12 courses of priests. Elder works alone in, in chapters 5 and 7, but they work otherwise with the four living beings that we haven't come to yet. And those are in chapters 4, 8, 14, and 19, which suggests that since the living beings, and I'll give you a foretest of that, are angels or spirit beings, now, these, these are angels in the sense that they are spirit beings, but they are not necessarily messengers. So, for their being spirit beings, if you look carefully at chapter 5, 9 and 10, the elders are clearly separated from the redeemed. The elders are also not mentioned after Revelation 19 when the church is very prominent. The controlling group, my conclusion is the 24 elders, along with Jesus, are con the controlling group among the good spirit beings. Satan also has spirit beings at his behest, behest and they are called demons. They are evil. But there's a counterpart among the good angels, the good spirit beings. And I believe that Jesus, along with the 24 elders, represent some sort of, uh, um, let's say, uh, head of the group of good spirit beings. Now, we see them also appear in Daniel chapter 7 in the scene uh, which chooses as to whether God is an abomination or not and come to the conclusion that he is not only just, but he's also a justifier of those who are not saved. Now, this is the final thing I'm going to talk about this time. And it's... Uh, a passage from Isaiah 24. Now, Isaiah chapter 24, verse 23, says this, Then the moon will be abashed and the sun ashamed. For the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, and his glory will be before his elders. To me, this is uh, enormous evidence that the 24 elders 
or simply the highest level of spirit beings which along with Jesus run the court of the good spirit beings. I'm going to stop there. And as you may have gathered, we're going to go through the people that appear in the throne scene and we'll take them uh, time by time. And we have not yet mentioned the one sitting on the throne. I'm not going to spend much time with him because I believe that is God the Father. I'll give you more evidence for that later. And um, we need to talk about the Lamb, which has not been mentioned yet. And then we will, after we've identified the people, or not the people necessarily, but those who are in the throne scene, then we will take up the action and what happens after they're identified. Father, thank you so much. We thank you once again that you are with us, you bless us, you listen to our prayers. And Father, we just ask that you continue to be with us. For we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.